What are the theoretical limits of human strength? Modern lifting culture has been around for over a century, pushing the boundaries of human capability through sports like bodybuilding, powerlifting, weightlifting, and strongman competitions. Over time, we've perfected the methods for developing the best talent on the planet, and world records have continued to rise. But how far can we actually go? Powerlifting, created in 1964, uses three basic barbell movements, the squat, bench press, and deadlift, to test the maximal strength of the entire body. Since the sport's inception, records have soared, with each new athlete seemingly redefining what's possible. The early records, such as Dr. Terry Todd's 1,780 LBS total in 1964, were impressive. But just over a decade later, Don Rainout shattered those numbers with a total of 2,391 LBS in 1975. This incredible leap pushed the boundaries even further and raised an obvious question, when does it stop? The rise of specialized gear and technology in the late 20th century saw numbers grow even larger, but often with the help of tools that augmented a lifter's abilities. It wasn't until 2013 that a new raw record was set by Andrei Malanichev, breaking the 38-year-old standard and reigniting the pursuit of the strongest human alive. Today, the record stands at an astonishing 2,606 LBS, set by Dan Bell. Yet, as each year brings bigger lifters with more talent, we must ask ourselves again what are the true limits of human strength? To answer this, let's consider the current benchmarks. The heaviest deadlift ever pulled was 501 kg 1,104 LBS, done by strongman legend Hafther Bjornsson. The bench press record without supportive equipment is held by Julius Maddox at just under 795 LBS, while Vlad Alhazov's 1,157 LBS squat stands as the heaviest ever performed without a squat suit. These athletes are incredibly large, with massive frames that help support these astounding weights. The average weight of the top powerlifters and strongmen is around 400 LBS, with many standing well over 6 feet tall. More mass and a larger frame allow for greater weight to be moved, a crucial factor when lifting maximum loads. On the other end of the scale, there are outliers like John Hack, who at around 215 LBS body weight, has deadlifted 900 LBS and bench pressed 600 LBS. This speaks to the efficiency of smaller athletes, though the absolute records are always held by the biggest. But human strength isn't just about muscle, it's also about the frame that supports those muscles and the nervous system that activates them. Our bones and connective tissues must be capable of withstanding the stress placed on them, which becomes a significant factor as we approach the limits of strength. Lifting a thousand pounds or more puts immense pressure on the body's structure, and injuries such as tendon ruptures become a real concern. The human frame can be trained to support extreme loads, as demonstrated by feats like Greg Ernest's backlift of 5,340 LBS or the hip lifts performed by strongmen with over 2,500 LBS. Genetics also play a crucial role in determining human strength. Muscle fibers come in different types fast twitch fibers, which are powerful but tire quickly, and slow twitch fibers, which are less powerful but can endure for longer periods. Elite strength athletes tend to have a higher proportion of fast twitch fibers, which helps them generate more force. However, someone born with fewer fast twitch fibers cannot simply train themselves into having the same explosive musculature as an NBA player or a cheetah. Another key factor is our nervous system, which controls how much of our muscle we can actually use at once. The human body inherently limits our muscle activation to prevent injury. Maximal exertion without proper conditioning could result in torn muscles and detached tendons, which is why our nervous system acts as a governor keeping us from using all our potential strength. Training, aggression, and even certain psychological states can help increase this muscle activation, but there is always a ceiling. Indeed, there is a common myth regarding superhuman feats of strength people writing about mothers lifting cars to save their children. Many accounts have been exaggerated or distorted, yet lifting a car, even partially, is not easy it must be done with leverage and pressure that make the effort appear more heroic than it really is. But adrenaline and extreme conditions do allow people to lift heavier loads than might be normally the case, and there are distinct boundaries set by our anatomy. To meaningfully strengthen the human, we may be forced to consider genetic engineering, focusing on selection for bigger bodies, more desirable muscle quality, and denser bones. Projects like CRISPR could ultimately enable the manufacture of athletes genetically engineered for optimal strength traits. If anything, given the widely held concept of using genetic engineering to further amplify human strength, ethical questions surface there. How would sports competitions turn out with enhanced athletes? Would it require the gen altered and unaltered athletes to compete separately? This would then lead to the debate that may soon involve our interest. 
with technological advancements set to offer a future in which athletes with superhuman strength become very possible. But then, where do we set the limits between human achievement and artificial enhancement? Already exoskeletons are under development so that workers can potentially lift greater loads than they could otherwise, or even help a mobility-impaired person walk again. Indeed, we could see that exoskeleton technology may develop more for athletic performance so that people can potentially lift weights that would be impossible for a human to do otherwise. Such equipment can only be employed in strongman competitions or in new sports designed particularly for augmented athletes. It does that by forcing the question of what is athletic competition and whether such feats of strength should belong to human strength. Advances in drugs improve human strength. There have been performance-enhancing drugs used for quite a long time, though controversy seems to be attached with use. Some of the drugs used include steroids and growth hormones that can increase muscle mass and strength by several folds, however, risks are attached and potential long-term health consequences. Debates over fairness in sports and whether the attempt to achieve greater strength is worth the possible cost to the health of the athlete have been brought into the spotlight. Meanwhile, as science discovers more drugs capable of raising performance with fewer side effects, the distinction between natural and artificial improvements will blur along with it. Psychological factors are one of the very interesting attributes of human strength. The fight-or-flight response can temporarily enhance a person's strength by flooding the body with adrenaline. This hormone increases heart rate, improves blood supply to muscles and boosts energy, which can enhance performance in the short term. Although it doesn't make the average person a world record powerlifter, it does show the capability of the human body to perform above its limits if the body is given the proper conditions. Many athletes draw on psychological techniques, including visualization and arousal management, to mobilize this hitherto unseen potential. However, these effects are temporary and do not let athletes bypass the biological barriers that we are limited by. These athletes could have their bone structures engineered to withstand extreme loads, muscle fibers neatly designed for optimal power output, and nervous systems precisely calibrated for error-free coordination. In such a world, probably the records we witness today can be broken. The concepts of human strength would change permanently. Yet, despite the giant leaps forward in genetics and pharmaceuticals, there is a limit. Absolutely constrained by the laws of physics is what is possible. The human body, no matter what enhancement, can only take so much force before bones break, tendons snap or muscles tear. Gravity is an implacable force, and the stresses on the body when lifting anything extreme are immense. There will ultimately be a point at which any gain in strength is outweighed by the likelihood of catastrophic failure. And that's all for today. If you find this video amazing, please hit the like and subscribe button for more of these kinds of videos. Thanks for watching.